Hello, my name is Peter and I work for the Microsoft Partner Projectum. And in this video, I'm going to introduce new users to Microsoft Project for the Web, also emphasizing uh, what it can help you with in terms of scheduling your tasks, but also some of the most recent updates that uh, Microsoft, the project team, have done with this specific tool. So first off, to get access to Project for the Web, you need a license, but also you just have to go to project.microsoft.com. And when you're here, you can see all the projects that you have been working on yourself, also roadmaps, projects that have been shared with me, and projects that are created by me. And if I want to create a new project, I can simply click up here, but I can also expand it and create new roadmaps. So if you have created a project and someone needs to see that project, one recent update that was done by Microsoft is that anyone with an Office 365 license can actually access and see those projects um, in a read-only format. So you are able to easily share those projects um, to anyone inside your organization. If we click on new project up here, it brings us to the landing page for a new project. First off, you'll notice if you are new to this that it's very lightweight. It means uh, you can use the entire screen to actually track and plan lots of tasks. And right here, we can start off by giving the project a name. So if we click up here, we can easily go in and say, my demo project as a name for this, and also define the starting date for this specific project, which could be uh, Monday the 27th of July, like this. And that's it. Then we have a grid view or a grid approach to plan our work. We have a board approach and the timeline approach, sort of the Gantt chart. So if we click on grid, first off, we can click on add new task and perhaps create a phase if you want to break down your tasks. So phase one could be the number one. Then we have task A and task B and task C. And we might also have a milestone at the very end of this phase. Next up, we have our phase two with task D, task E and task F and another milestone like this. So that's a simple way to do that. Then next we can indent and outdent our tasks to really break down into a VBS structure the tasks. It could be to something like this. And then the same thing goes for this one. So now we have a phase one we can group on and a phase two. The next thing we can then do is to go in and add people to the tasks, set duration as well, and add more columns. Columns could be something like effort or start date. Let's go with that one. Maybe a finish date. And then maybe also the effort, so the hours from this task. And then percent complete, just to give you an idea, and maybe the buckets. So this is what we have right now. Uh, and in the near future, you'll be able to also have custom columns up here. Um, so that's something where you should check up on the Microsoft roadmap to see when that's coming out. But right now it's in development. So next up, um, it's worth noticing that um, a few months ago, Microsoft decided to do an update on the way that tasks are scheduled. Now, this means that effort and duration is not necessarily linked together. This is a big change and a good change, uh, something I also asked for on user voice, because some people prefer to plan effort themselves. A scenario could be that in, on the task A level right here, we want to go in and add a person, which could be, sorry, this guy, the administrator person. Then we want to set aside X amount of time in terms of duration, saying this specific task will take 40 days to execute. And it will then suggest that the starting point, uh, starting date for this task is the same time when the project starts, July 27th, so next Monday. And it also suggests effort, which is in this case 320 hours. But for this task B, I also want to assign the same person, but I want to control the effort myself. So let's imagine that you have a five day work week, but you only want the person to spend 10 hours on the tasks. So you have one task where you can spend 10 hours, but you can spend the entire week to do it. So 10 hours in this case, you can add here. And then if you click over on the duration part, you'll see that it just writes one day. The reason is that I started off by writing in the effort column rather than in the duration column. So now I can actually say that the 10 hours should be distributed over five days, like this. It does not change the hours unless you want it to. So now it's changing them, but I could go in and write 
10 again. And it sticks with the five days right here. But if I write 10 days, then what? So what has been taking place in, in behind the scenes here is that now it has calculated that over five days, you do 10 hours of work, which means two hours each day. So if I write 10 days right now, it will suggest that now if it should be 20 hours. So that's why we can now work this way uh, where we can have the system semi suggest to us how much effort should be you spend, but we can override it if we want to just by going in and writing 10 hours again. As an alternative to up here where the schedule from start to finish will sort of drive the effort that is uh, supposed to be spent on this task. Same thing goes if you add one more person, which happens like just which will Same thing happens if you want to add another person. You click on the assign task symbol. You can search throughout your entire Active Directory. You can write, for instance, um, Alex and find that person. Clicking on him will then ask if that person should be added to the group of this project. So for each project plan, there is an Office 365 group which will control security and also the same group that you can use to interact and communicate and collaborate with your team members inside Microsoft Teams. So if you had an existing group or team, Microsoft team, you could edit that person to that group as well, or the entire project. But let's create a new group, this one. So two persons are now added. So the hours or the effort went up, double up, if you wanted it to be like that. But if you wanna bring it back to where we came from, you can always go in and just write 320 hours, and that is still fine. It does not change duration. So you can control duration and effort separate from each other if you want to, but you could also have the system suggest effort for you. That is a good update. So next up, what we can do is that we can go to the grid, or sorry, the board. And in the board here, we sort of see something that looks like Microsoft Planner, except it's Microsoft Project. So here we can do more things that you, that you can normally do in Planner because it's connected to also the Gantt chart and the grid we just had. So now I have something called buckets right here. It says group by bucket. There's also a group by progress and group by finish date to easily see where things should take place or when. Um, so bucket one, we could rename, for instance, to anything that's related to operations. I misspelled that, operations. And then we have IT tasks and we have some training tasks perhaps. And then what you can do is simply drag and drop around your tasks saying task A belongs to IT, task F is also here, task E is there, um, the milestone we just stay, should just stay here, task C and task D should go to training. And every time we do something like this, if we go back to the grid, that bucket will now be reflected in the grid as well. We can also change right here, for instance, task B to go to IT, so that when we go to the board in real time, we'll see that this task now went to IT. Besides that, we can change the view to progress and simply drag and drop. So these you cannot change from not started, which equals 0% complete to in progress, which equals 50% complete all the way through to completed, which is 100% complete. So if we take task A and put it in progress and task B has completed, you will see that if we go back to the grid again, that you can now see that 50%, 100% being shown here and also rolled up to the face level, which is now 60% done. So if you wanna bring it back again, you can take task B into in progress. And if you go back to the grid, then task B is now 50% done. So that really works quite well. Besides that, we can click on these um, tiles right here, which opens up this view, where we can also add some notes like this. We can also change start and finish date, duration, um, and also see the effort, which is again, is something you cannot do in Planner. So that's one of the biggest um, changes between, or difference between Planner and Project for the Web is that here we have the hours uh, dimension. So here I can say, well, we're not really done. Well, we're 50% done, but actually it's 160 hours, but remaining is actually 90 hours. So in total, that's 250 hours. So here we can change those things and still have percent complete uh, staying where it is if you wanted to. Dependencies I'm gonna get back to. So let's go away from that one right now. Now if we go to the timeline view, this is where you'll see something that looks like the old project, the Gantt chart so to speak, but in an updated version. So here you can hover over 
each task and see from start to finish when is this task taking place. We can also zoom out to another level that's easier to work with perhaps here and therefore see this project's start and finish date and the other one. We can actually extend the task duration by simply dragging it around or shorten it. We can create a link between this one to that one but if we try to do that now, nothing moves down here simply because this task has actual work on it. It has already started. So instead, if you wanted to see um, this real um, critical path analysis, what you should do then is go here and have all your tasks not have a start date. And one way of doing that is simply setting percent complete to zero. Therefore, it moved the entire task to start after this task is finished. And you'll see the dependencies right here as well. So that's a simple way to set up this structure. So no ma matter where we want to plan, if we are planning Agile, like a Kanban approach, tracking it through a Gantt chart experience or something that looks like a SharePoint list or Excel, we can do that and everything relates all together. So that's a simple way of showing how Project Full Web works. Now, if you wanted to copy this project and reuse the information, you could essentially just click here, go to the three dots up there, and click on copy project. So let's do that, which creates a new project just with a dash copy after it, but keeping the same information except for one thing, which are your resources. So because there is a security group behind all of these projects, when you add a person, the person gets added to the security model. Therefore, we do not want to copy all the group members when we copy a project plan. So it's a template without the resource information. So far, so good. So if we go back to the starting page here, now we can still see the two projects we just did, both the copy and the original one. And if you wanted to bring that information into what we call a roadmap, so across different projects, rolling up the information, you could go up here and create a roadmap, which is essentially the same thing. Except here, we can also give the roadmap a name, my demo roadmap, like this. And then we can go to add row or key dates. Now key dates are your top down key dates to track. So here you can go in and say my first uh, deliverable, oh, sorry, deliverable one is going to happen or should happen from a plan perspective on September 9th. Status is not set, but we can actually have on track at risk and so on updated manually or by a flow that automatically updates this based on some certain uh, task information that are coming from the project plan. So let's add the key date. Now it shows you. Let's make another one, deliverable two, which is going to happen somewhere around November 25th, add key date. So now we have uh, deliverable two here as well, and we can zoom out to better over, see exactly what's going on across all your projects uh, across multiple months and years in this case. So it was a little bit too much of a zoom in. So let's go here. Now let's add a row. Add row means essentially adding a work stream where you can add a work stream one. We could call this something else, but let's go with that one initially. And I can define who should sort of track and run this work stream. The owner of that could be in this case myself, like this. And then I can connect, connect this work stream with a real project in Project for Web or in Azure Boards or even in Project v Online. If we click on project, we can find the most recent projects we just did. For instance, the My Demo project. So the first one we did. Clicking on that one then brings us to this next step in connecting to the two worlds. It asks if it can connect the project roadmap to common data service. And this one is where we're going to get our project information from because everything we do in Project for the Web will be saved into the common data service, actually going to be called Dataflex as of today and, and forward. But if we click connect to this, it means that we are essentially setting up a, a power automate flow that will make sure that things do not get out of sync, which brings us to this place. So here we can now see all the tasks that are coming from this specific project plan we just did, the phase, the tasks, the milestones. We can do different filtering on all milestones, only the summary tasks, whatever it is, top level tasks for that matter, or search freely for tasks if you have a lot. Now, if we then select, for instance, uh, everything, the phase, the tasks, the milestones, maybe the same here, only those that have dates will sort of really make sense to bring in. But let's just do this initially and click add. 
So now you'll see that those parts from the project plan have been added right here. And you can also click on it and actually identify the status either by setting it or making sure that it gets synchronized with the project plan. Right now I'm just going to set it myself and saying this is on track. But this one perhaps is at risk. So this is a simple way to sort of update those numbers. This actually shows a milestone. So here you have a key date, which you can then compare later on to the deliverable up here. So in this case, we'll be on track or early in some ways. Now we can then set up a new work stream, which could then be another work stream of some kind with another owner maybe who is separate from or not the same person as the project manager and connect this also to project, but take the other one we did, the copy. And again, the same thing happens. We need to connect the two worlds and making sure things can synchronize. So clicking connect there and going for that exact same project breakdown because it was a copy of the first project. So let's just take the face and the task gate just as an example and add that one. So now we have two. You cannot drag and drop things around. You cannot uh, update numbers from here. If you want to do that, you have to click on it like this. And then going to open details will bring you which brings you to this view where you can simply click on this connection, which takes you to project for the web and where this specific project is going on. So you can actually update if you have access at least, update the numbers. And it also brings you directly to that specific phase or task or milestone that you clicked on within the roadmap. So from here, I can obviously go in and do changes to it if I wanted to, depending on the security or user rights that I have for this project plan. So that's how we can build roadmaps and also connect that to the agile or software development world in DevOps and combine that with a project for the web um, tasks into one overview. So this was a simple intro to project for web, um, Microsoft project roadmaps, and hopefully you liked it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out uh, either on the blog or directly through email. My email is pk at projectsum.com. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will update you on more new features from Microsoft in coming months. Thank you.